How's it going, everybody? Matt Hill from National Parks at Night here. I'm gearing up to go traveling for the first time in a year and a half, and I can't tell you how excited I am. What I'm choosing to put in my bag has been an agonizing process, but I'm finally done. I am going out for a workshop and to spend some time in southern Utah. So I have a couple of missions that I packed out for, and we're going to talk about it as we get into it. But here is my Shimoda Action X50 bag. It's a 50 liter backpack with a roll top, which I recently upgraded. And I'm going to disassemble this uh, so you guys can see what's inside. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the tripods and support gear out of there. I have my pack pod. This gets even smaller, but this is uh, something that I often use with smaller lights. And it's a very light, it can go underwater and it's got plastic teeth that you can use to dig it into a hillside and I often do that. So we'll set that to the side. The second thing, and you've probably seen this before, is this wonderful uh, Ellen Chrome. It's just a boom arm, right? This is, this is something where you can put a light on the end of it and boom it out so that uh, you can get it to the right angle up in the air. Let's start with tripods. I'm bringing two tripods on this trip. The first one is the TrioPod M from NovaFlex, and that is everything from here down. On top of that, I'm putting the leveling base from Acrotec. And on top of that is the GPSS head. This has the lever lock head on it. This tripod can go all the way flat to the ground, which is great in a twist, right? It also has a removable center column, which I probably won't bring with me uh, because I like the, the flatness of this. So I can lay this completely flat if I need to without changing the legs. But if I wanted to, I could unscrew all three of these legs and swap them out for this ground pod leg. This is for great for tabletop photography also and macro stuff. So that makes it shorter and more lightweight once you put all three of these on there. And these same legs can be used on the next tripod that I'm gonna show you. But first, I just wanna say that this one is not a travel tripod, meaning the legs do not fold up and over all the way. Uh, they only go out to flat. They don't flip open over. So you don't need to worry about anything sticking out on the sides. But it is rather tiny when you look at it on this way. So it's very compact for a travel tripod. It's extremely sturdy. And it also has the ability, I'm going to show you this that I really love. This holds for not only external video recorders, uh, but also, you could hang your bag off of this to keep it off of the ground if you want, just by putting the backpack straps over this. And that's a feature that I use. There's also uh, a quarter 20 and 3 8 screw right here if you wanted to mount something accessory like an arm, and I do, uh, for an external video recorder. So this is a full-fledged, very strong, very tall tripod. Uh, when fully extended with the heads on it, the camera is at my eye level, which is something that I really like. And that is taller than the previous tripod that I used, which was the Gitzo Traveler 2. So I'm really enjoying the heck out of this tripod. Uh, it's been my become my everyday tripod. Haven't been this in love in a while. And the best part is it doesn't need to be on the side of my tripod. I can deconstruct this tripod because the spider and the legs come apart, all three legs. I can deconstruct it and put it in smaller places if I need to such as my bag. There's my everyday tripod. The second tripod I'm bringing is beefier, much beefier. This is the TrioPod Pro 75. Uh, it's got a nice wide stance. It's got much thicker legs than the other one. Although I could put these legs on this and these legs on that, they are interchangeable. On top of this, or in the center, it comes with a flat plate, but I have added a leveling base that goes in the center of that. Uh, and that is the M-Bell Pro 75. So that was an elective choice of mine. I also like that these legs lock straight. When you pull them, they don't pull out. You have to engage the button to unlock them. So that means you can carry it by the leg. On top of that, I have the Magic Ball and this can hold an extreme amount of weight. But one of the things I love the most is 
when you're locking it down, it doesn't shift. And I've really fallen in love with that feature. And I've also gotten the accessory handle. It normally comes with a handle that's metal and about this long, but during the winter, my hands got really cold, even though I was using gloves. And I decided to put this handle in instead. But I really like being able to control the whole head by this handle. Um, different than other ball heads, of course. Since you have this, the weight can just fall forward, right? So you hold the camera at the same time as you're doing this. Uh, and this has friction control. And on the top, I've added the Q-Mount Mini, which is their Arca Swiss, a, a miniature Arca Swiss lock, which is fantastic. It grabs really well. But one of the things that I, I truly love about this tripod uh, is using this one in particular for ground level work. So I have the legs for this for travel reasons in the front of my backpack. If I wanted to shoot some extreme wide angle stuff down low to the ground, which I've been doing lately, and do some focus stacking with something in the foreground, such as a cactus, then I can put these itty bitty legs on, which disturb the floor on the fauna a lot less, and then put this out to the side. And now I've got a tripod with a much smaller footprint. It's rock solid. And I can adjust these legs separately to get a different angle if I need to, right? And then I still have this leveling head here and the magic ball. And whenever I put something on this, this is also my go-to for macro because it is rock solid. And you don't want anything to move when you're doing macro and you're close to the ground. One other thing about the Pro 75 is that this does have the sort of travel tripod feature that you can take these legs and bring them all the way up around and then they, they come around the head here. So if I wanted this to become a, a, a little bit shorter, I could do that. And I could bring it together like that. And it's really nifty because it does lock out at different lengths. So you could use this inverted without inverting the center column. So this is a, a pretty serious tripod, thus the name Pro in the name. And I think it's worth the extra weight to carry it as my second tripod, and sometimes primary for when I do really heavy work or I do uh, time lapses that require ultimate stability. So that's it for tripods. We're going to clear this stuff off to the side and look at some other equipment now. Here's all the stuff that was in the top of my bag. And it's, uh, I have these organizers from Shimoda. It's a four pocket folding folio which has this beautiful clip on it right here, all right? And it has this hook so that you can hang it off of your tripod. So when you, if you don't want your stuff on the ground, you take it out and you use this to hang it off your tripod. So what do I have in here? I have all these items, charger for my MacBook Pro, uh, the AV adapter, the USB-C AV adapter, the USB cord, USB cord for my iPad, iPad charger, a spare, mini tripod which is kind of junky but just in case because sometimes sometimes you just need a little support uh, a dual usb charger for the car because those hours are necessary this is a thread mount lens adapter for my macro kit this is an absolutely necessary item this is the eye lead uh, sensor cleaner uh, which with mirrorless cameras, you absolutely need something like this. Uh, this is my second intervalometer, the Velo Shutterboss 2. This is the Nikon. Two spare batteries. One's Nikon OEM, one's Jupio. Fantastic brand. Novaflex QPL2. Extra Arca Swiss quick release plate, because you never know. My two Novaflex multi-tools, which have really saved my bacon many times. Uh, they're a little bit on the heavy side, but gosh, they're never going to fail in the field. Uh, in a spare body and rear cap for the Nikon Z mount. So all of this is going to go right back into there. Next up we have this boy. This is the big bag of fun right here. Uh, I'm going to unpack this and we'll show you what's inside. Okay, so what do we have in this bag? This is mostly lighting gear uh, and some accessories for holding lighting. Uh, first off, we have the light painting brushes universal connector, which fits on my flashlight, which is over there. We have two, not one, but two, because we run workshops and we have to be dependable, USB-C to HDMI adapters so that we can hook up and uh, instruct while we're there. 
I have this wonderful Kupo uh, quick release here. Basically, I put this onto that. I put this other end on the light that I want to use so that I can take it off quickly uh, in the field. But I don't mount it until I get to the scene. Next up, we have the uh, NovaFlex Basic Ball and the NEI GER-19 uh, panning ball head. This is uh, one of the strongest mini ball heads I've ever seen. It's very reliable. Uh, it has a panning base. It comes with, and I had just have it in a different place, a cold shoe to put on top. Um, but this basic ball has many holes in it, you see here. So you can put these legs in all these different positions uh, and have a differently formed support for whatever you're supporting, um, depending on the height that you need. Uh, and then this is what I use as an impromptu light stand. And if there's a really strange uh, angle going on, uh, let's say I needed to put it at a weird angle because of the, the terrain, I can do that because these legs go in lots of different directions. But it's very solid and it just, it works. Um, and definitely worth the weight uh, for the versatility. Now in night photography, we don't move that fast, so I don't care that these legs aren't fast. Uh, because I'm not moving at a million miles an hour. Next up is uh, NovaFlex uh, suction cup for when we're doing uh, some road work and I want to do some uh, some vlogging or some addressing the camera in the field. So I would just put the uh, the Niger 19 ball head onto this when I'm doing that. We have two video batteries here. Uh, these I use to run my video recorder. Um, I have a, a spare because I like to, to loan it out, uh, NovaFlex Castell Mini 2. This is a, a focusing rack. This can be used for two reasons. It's primarily used to do focus stacking, whether it's macro or otherwise. You can also use this as a nodal rail, uh, which I find very helpful. Um, in the bag here is one of my favorite lighting tools. I told you this is about lighting, right? Uh, this is a Nanlite PavoTube 2 6C, and this is a 10 inch LED uh, that is delightful. It's got an internal battery. You charge it by USB-C, and there we are straight into special effects mode. But basically, uh, this allows you to choose color temperatures and color uh, chroma and all the other fun stuff. Uh, and it's magnetic. Um, and to keep it safe and handy, I keep it in the, the bag that it comes with. This is a grid for that, so that I can help direct the light. That just slides over the end of it, so that you can kill the spill, right? This is an arm that I screw into my tripod head uh, to hold up my external video recorder. It is for mounting. This is a Mi Photo Sidekick. And this is what I use when I want to put my phone on the tripod because it's got an Arca Swiss base on the bottom. I can just use this to put the phone in and do recordings or on the tabletop. Wonderful tool to have. This is Acrotex nodal rail, uh, another fantastic tool. Uh, I bring it along uh, because I do like to do panos. Um, lately I've been into NovaFlex, uh, but this is a great tool and often on workshops when somebody wants to do panos and they don't have a, a nodal rail, I'll make sure this is around so they can borrow it. Uh, and my latest and loveliest lighting tool, this is the Luxley Fiddle. Uh, let's turn this on. So this is an extraordinary lighting tool that we love that changed the game, or at least Luxley changed the game when it came to low level landscape lighting because you can go down to 1%. The way the fiddle changed the game was through the use of their app, you can go down to less than 1%, half a percent, one tenth of a percent, which when you just want a kiss of light, it means, it means a big deal. I mean, it has a big deal. So, uh, and that's often what we want. This also has, as you can see, a quick startup time, and then you have colors, and then you have gels also. Uh, this is an internal battery light. It charges via USB-C, has a quarter 20 there, uh, and it comes with this removable diffuser 
that's magnetic. And you can also get this wonderful pouch for it as an accessory, and then everything's all together. So lovely, lovely, lovely light. Uh, a great upgrade if you've had the Luxley Viola before. This is a step up from it where you don't need to have an external battery. And the batteries last forever in night photography. All right, let's put this all back together. This is the Light Painting Brushes Portrait Light. I already have the universal connector down on the end, and we'll pull out a flashlight and show you what it does. But basically, you, you plug a flashlight in this side, and you can use this to create a soft light effect because the light is this tall. And it's kind of like the LED light that I had, except the only battery you need is the one in your flashlight. Very lightweight. Next up, this is an important piece of kit for me. This is the uh, Atomos Ninja V. Uh, this has a removable hard drive. Uh, I can record higher quality video from my Nikon Z6, which already has great quality. This is where the video battery goes. Uh, and I also use this as an external monitor when I need to see things more crisply than the back of the camera will allow me to do. Um, I created this myself. This is just a, a piece of uh, hard tile left over from doing flooring so that the screen is protected. This is the connector that you need to read the hard drive. And then this is the HDMI cable that you need to plug it into the camera. So it's just mini HDMI to regular full-size HDMI. This is also a safe state, safe place for me to store the 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter natural night filter by Nisi. I don't want it to get crushed and the sandwiching it between the Atomos and this is a really safe place in my bag. We're gonna have fun using this. This next accessory case is a small accessory case from Shimoda. I use this, it, notice that it has plastic on the back and has a zipper on this side. It also has handles and attachment points and it comes with a strap so that if you want to take it out of your bag, you can just put it on and carry it with you. I love this because I can look at the back and I know what's in it, right? And I know that these are my flashlights and my smaller items. So let's unpack it and see what's in there. Hey, here's everything that fits in that little case. Let's walk through it. Starting up here, we have Irix's 100 millimeter glass filter holder. This fits on their 15 millimeter lens uh, through this lock right here. And then you pull on this uh, to pull it, to take it on and off and the filters fit in there. So I would use that with either Irix's or Benro's or Nisi's filters. Uh, and I use all three of them because they, they offer different kinds of light pollution filtering. Uh, they're similar, but not the same. Over here, I have Irix's screw in 95 millimeter. This fits directly on the end of the 15 millimeter lens go straight in there. I have this that's sized for my Nikon uh, 24 to 70 lens. Uh, this is the Nisi uh, natural night filter. So uh, that one is ready to go on that. Next up, we have the wall charger uh, for the Luxley Fiddle, um, a USB-C cable, my Velo three-way bubble, which really comes in handy in certain situations. This is my inexpensive yet high-powered laser that we use to point out constellations during workshops. And now here's my my Coast flashlights. Uh, I'm a big fan of green, as you can see. On the left is the HP 7R, right? And on the right is the HP 5R. So you can see the size difference here. They have a different power, each of them. So I like to keep them both in my bag. Um, but this one fits easily into the end of the light wand here. And that's the universal connector. And you see how big the end of that is, how small this one is. This one also fits. And then you can see what it does. So we have some pretty bright lights in here, but you can imagine that in the dark, this is a wonderful portrait light, the portrait light from light painting brushes. Uh, next, we have my uh, Benro V-Mate. Uh, This is a three axis gimbal video recorder. And you'll see that um, this allows you to take videos uh, that are gimbal supported um, and have follow focus. And I use this as an action cam and I can put my phone on the front side of this over here. So I can put my phone here to control the gimbal. This is the tripod mount for the V-Mate. Um, 
when I want to not be walking around with it and I want to hold it stationary uh, on a tripod, I use this. So this allows me to either set it down or to mount it with an, an action foot. Uh, over there, or there's a quarter 20 on the bottom, so I can put it on a tripod. That's important for capturing your adventures. Next up, we have one of my latest acquisitions. I got really excited about this, uh, the Darius Twin Knight Rider. Um, I have a lot of fun ideas for this, but if you've ever seen uh, his work, it's extraordinary, and of course he'd be the one to invent this, but basically you get colored tips that you can use to create light writing in any artistic form that you'd like. Uh, so you get a little bucket of colored tips and you get this USB re rechargeable uh, device. And these are all handmade by him, so it's, it's pretty awesome. They're 3D printed and handmade. All right, let's put this all back. Okay, so you can see that I, I've sort of, I like that my pouches now have the ability uh, to be used separately. And I don't like having my stuff floating around inside of my bag. Uh, so as much as possible now, I'm using this compartmentalization uh, to help sort out the stuff that I have and keeping, for the most part, like things together. All right, let's get into the center of the bag. Now there's a couple of really important things that are missing from here, namely cameras and a lens. My primary camera is a Nikon Z6 II and my secondary camera is a Nikon Z6. Uh, they're extraordinary for low-level nighttime photography. Uh, we've talked about that ad infinitum here at NPAN, but it's still my choice. I recently got Nikon's S version of the 24 to 70 f 2.8, and it is one of the sharpest lenses I've ever owned in my life. I absolutely adore that lens. So I also have the IRIX 15 millimeter f 2.4. Uh, this is an F mount lens, uh, so I have the FTZ adapter along with me. Um, it does come with a lens hood. It has a 95 millimeter thread on the front, uh, which is wonderful to be able to use a screw mount lens on such a wide lens. It's fully manually focused with a locking knob here. And you can see in a, a video that we'll link here, you can also adjust this focus should it drift uh, yourself. Next up is something I'm so excited to use out in the desert. This is the IRIX 11 millimeter cine lens in the Nikon Z mount. I'm so very, very excited to use this. One of the beautiful things about using a cine lens is the focus is butter, butter smooth. This one doesn't have the focusing lock like the photo lens does, but this focusing is so smooth. And then you have what's called T-stops instead of F-stops, um, and you can see them on both sides, which is fantastic. This mount that you see down here is because the lens is very heavy. You can move this mount to the top also. The lens hood is magnetic. So here's the holes for that right there. Let's take a look at that. You can move this foot to the top using those holes right there. I've taken some shots with this already. Uh, and I have to say, it's absolutely glorious. Uh, and 11 millimeters can get a lot of sky at night. So I believe that this is the primary uh, lens for me to use uh, when I'm making time lapses. I'm looking forward to that. Next up, we have my tried and true and absolutely reliable uh, Nikon 70-200 f2.8. You could tell that it's seen some battle. Uh, it's still uh, fantastic and it's it's bulky. It takes up a, a big amount of space in my bag. However, uh, I bring it because I love to get those detail shots. Uh, that other people sometimes forget to do. So I think it's very important to bring it along. Also, a surprisingly great macro lens when you add a bellows in front of it. Moving on, I have two, not one, but two color checkers. One of these is for photo, and one of these is for video. You have to take care of your color. So this allows me to, during the daytime, create a profile that makes sure all the colors pop into the right place. If you need a reliable, a white or gray card, it's in the back. And this is a clamshell design uh, that fits around your neck if you need it. The video version is a little bit different. It still has color patches, but you'll notice that the blacks are shiny. This is because the requirements for getting appropriate exposure and video are different. And this helps people to do, do color grades. 
You also have a balancing card, but you also have a focusing chart too. Next up, we have this Matador ground cover blanket, and this is extraordinary. For when you just don't want to get the dust and the dirt uh, onto either your body or your bag, you can pop this out, and it folds up into this pocket-sized blanket. Indispensable. Next up is something that everybody should have. You should bring a medical kit. You should always have one of these with you, just because it's a smart thing to do. Uh, this particular one is waterproof. Uh, there's an interior bag in here. I added some things to it that I wanted to show you. Uh, the skin's so soft, mosquito repellent. These smell great, uh, but they keep the mosquitoes away. Skin-like band-aids. Uh, these are great for when you get a blister. Absolutely necessary. And on the other side, a nice Tiger Balm back patch. Uh, but this has uh, lots of things in it that'll help in an emergency first aid situation. Last but certainly not the least, something I couldn't do this without, is my uh, Fotix Aeon. This is my intervalometer of choice. It is a two-piece, um, but it does come with cables for nearly every camera out there. This goes on the camera, this you hold in your hand, um, and there's a video about it that I'll link to over there. The Shimoda Action X50 bag. I chose it for a reason. One is the superior harness. This harness has, as you can see back here, has multi, multiple levels where you can undo the Velcro here and choose a different level for different size frames of body. Uh, me, I'm up at the top. <laughs> you can also swap out these shoulder straps uh, for other ones such as technical ones or if you're a female, there's ones that are designed for different body types that are more comfortable. When you have a bag that's as heavy as mine, you need to make sure that the weight goes in the right places. So part of that is having a good harness, right? The other part is making sure that this waist belt puts it right on your hip. This is removable, but there, there's no way I'm going to remove mine. There are two pockets on the straps that I have here. Inside this pocket right here, I have a GPS. This GPS uh, is very simple, but you know what? It's very important uh, when you're going in the backcountry, which I will be doing on this trip. I also have another inspection flashlight here. Uh, the HP-1 Coast. So this is a lower light flashlight, which I just keep hooked to uh, the outside of my backpack here. In the other pocket on the strap, which I normally keep my water bottle in, but for travel, I put in here uh, a mosquito net, which is a good thing to have. And then my XPH-34R Coast headlamp. So this one is a beast. Uh, it does have a focusing headlamp. Um, it has a triple, and this is for navigation um, when we're, we're walking around and doing stuff. So it has three different power levels, which is good. Um, and it's also magnetic on this side, so you can stick it to something that's metal and it stays. So um, internal rechargeable battery, uh, it's a beast, but when you're serious about hiking and navigating and you know, getting around in the dark, uh, you won't mind having that around. This pocket does gusset out so you can put a water bottle in there. I keep uh, some D-rings on here uh, so that I can hook other things to it and I'll show you one of those things. One of those things that I put in there is this top loader. Uh, so when I'm hiking around and I want to have my camera at my hands, I just hook this. I put the, the camera, I take it out of the backpack and I put it here so I have this top loader just waiting to be used right off the front of my chest. Uh, so I just pack it with, you know, socks and other stuff in the meantime. Uh, this is also from Shimoda. Um, and of course, as you're wearing it, it folds away from you, which is great. Um, and it also has a dropout bottom for when you're using a longer lens so that this becomes a longer, it's good for my 70 to 200 or my macro lens, which is great for daytime photography. So that top loader just goes in my regular packing bag and I fill it up with clothing. So when the backpack is on and you want to access the camera, the reason I switched over to the X50 is this. I can bring this around and now I have access to my camera right here. You also have the ability to put a tripod on either side or a water bottle and you pull this out and now you have a cinch sack and then you can take this guy over here and thread it through there 
and have an even better way to make sure that things stay put right there. I love that feature. And I, I deploy these things once I get out of the, out of the airport, you know, once I fly, I put all these things out. So if you look at this bag, it looks pretty flight ready, right? You're not going to get hassled at the airport with a lot of stuff hanging off the sides. And they say, this won't fit in the overhead. Um, being able to roll top this gives me easy access to get in here. The other, the previous model that I had, I loved it, but the top was not as fast as that. Um, it had a, two separated compartments with zippers, which were also nice for keeping the stuff off, but this keeps the, the, the dirt and the water out. And I also still have a quick access to get into the top right here, should I need it. Up here, there is space for you to put some more small items such as filters in this hook right here is for your your water reservoir in the front here is where i put my my water and then this routes through right over here and it comes out the side of the pack here and then i can route it down here so got to stay hydrated right well, let's stay hydrated out there folks this side um, depending what if you put your tripods on the back side you'll be pulling them the weight further away from your body, it's further out. I prefer to put them on the sides. It distributes the weight more evenly. But if you do that, then that gives you access to this other side pouch, which allows you to have some more miscellaneous storage over here. And that's where I keep a second ground cover bag. That's really the end of what's in my bag, but I have a surprise for you. So there's some other things that I throw in my traveling bag, the bag where I put my clothes, uh, that don't necessarily fit into my backpack and I can switch them out inside my backpack because I've packed modularly. One of them is, and I'm using this right now, is my Ceramonic Blink 500 Pro system. And this has a transmitter, which is on me right now, a receiver, which is on the camera, uh, and then another transmitter, which means I can transmit two devices into one at the same time. And it has this handy USB-C charged case where when you put the devices back in, they charge in this case. So you don't have to plug them in until you've drained the case, much like AirPods Pro. So just like these have a case that charged them, the Ceramonic Blink 500 Pros also have a case that charge the transmitters and receiver. This comes with a nice zippy case, right? So you can zip this up and it stays nice. I put this other little accessory case with it, and this is where all of the the lav mics and the charging cables uh, and the connection cables go and the little dead cat for when you're using the lav wind. So this kit stays together, that's my sound kit. And that's pretty small for a sound kit for traveling. This is my Lissy Rugged a USB-C drive that I use for my, my main storage one on the road. This is a backup drive, a Samsung T5 drive. Uh, this I also use for other things, but once I download to this, I make a second copy to this while I'm on the road and I keep them in separate places in my bags. This is put together special for this trip. This is another Shimoda accessory case and this has all the great attachment points and the strap and everything. Um, but what, why do I have this monster? Well, in this is something I'm going to have fun doing and let's unpack it right now. This is going to be a long trip. First we have a week at a workshop down in Joshua Tree. And then Gabe and I are going to spend some time in southern Utah, uh, northern Arizona. So what I brought with me is three different star trackers. This is their Genie Mini 2. And I keep these guys in their boxes because it prevents this, this power button is a nuisance. It can get pressed in the bag and it can get drained. But this in the box... And let's assemble it really quick so you can see it. This is a syrup motion kit where you have two Genie Minis and a gimbal. And then when you put your camera on here, it will both uh, rotate this way and be able to do uh, this action here. So it'll turn this way and it'll turn this way. Uh, and then you control them all through an app. And then you can disassemble the whole thing so it's not this big when it comes time to use it. This one we'll be having some fun with. Next up is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. This you would put on top of a tripod and you'd want to have something that can allow it to tilt uh, for what angle of the equator that you're at. 
and you put another ball head up here on the end uh, and then this will slowly rotate uh, this piece right here with the to go opposite polar rotation and then I also have the move shoot move so the move shoot move is very compact a single box you would put a ball head on top of this uh, and you would put this on your tripod and this would then rotate this comes with accessories that you need the super nifty laser pointer that you use to find Polaris and then it all fits into this case during time lapses if you're going to be there when the dew point breaks uh, I have the lens muff and this simply this will go around the end of your lens you use hand warmers up to three of them uh, to keep your lens warmer than the air so that moisture and condensation doesn't happen on your lens let's put all this back together well, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed going through the kitchen sink with me. Um, yeah, I carry a lot of gear, uh, but I'm preparing for three weeks and three different kinds of challenges while I'm out shooting. Therefore, I need to be versatile in my approach and what tools I have available. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear. Otherwise, thanks for your time, and I look forward to replying to you. Take care. Have a great day. <music>